see you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Mr. President, thanks for having us. Oh, you get the brakes on. All right. Oh, good. You ready, please? Now, can you move it? Sure. We'll both vote, Mr. President. We'll both vote around. Yes. <laughs> Today, it's a pleasure to honor a great American and a trusted officer of this administration, Vern Orr. One can't help but have mixed emotions on occasions like this. We are not only recognizing Vern Orr's outstanding service as the Secretary of the Air Force, but we're also saying farewell. Retirement is an anxious and difficult time for some people, but not for Vern. He knows exactly what to expect. He's retired twice before. <laughs> Once from California state government, and another time from his business in Pasadena. And considering that he's already accepted a directorship at a Pasadena hospital, I suspect that this is just another practice retirement. <laughs> Fern's timing has always been impeccable. As soon as congressional lethargy over the budget threatened the social Security Trust Fund, he decided it was time to retire. <laughs> well, we're sorry. Vern and Joanne are leaving. And of course, you can't feel too badly when you know they're going back to California. <laughs> Where do I get my hat? <laughs> Vern, I understand you've been trying unsuccessfully for two months to renew your California driver's license by mail. <laughs> As a former chief of the California Department of Motor Vehicles, I think you'll cut through the red tape once you get out there. <laughs> we're going to miss Fernor, but we're not going to miss him as much as the Air Force is going to miss the OR team. He has served longer as the Secretary of the Air Force than any of his predecessors. And he leaves behind a record of achievement and success that has no equal. You don't have to take my word for how terrific a secretary Vern Orr has been. You can ask the men and women of the Air Force. They all know him, and he knows them. His deep and abiding commitment to the men and women who wear the, wear the Air Force blue and their families has been the hallmark of the Orr Secretariat. He has traveled around the world meeting them, getting their views on what is needed to ensure ours is the number one Air Force in the world. He has acted decisively on many of his insights and suggestions, and he solicited from those Air Force men and women in the field. Under Vern's leadership, the Air Force has grown in every measure. It is stronger, it is larger and better equipped, it is better trained and better led, and its ranks are filled with dedicated, capable professionals who know that Vern, this administration, and the American people understand and appreciate the Air Force's contribution to the overall national defense. Vern knows how important people are to the Air Force. He also understands and appreciates the need for first-class equipment so that our personnel can get their job done and come home safely. Under his leadership, the Air Force developed and acquired a modern weapon systems and technology that have been so vital to accomplish its mission. The Air Force inventory today reflects Vern's uncompromising commitment to quality for America's fighting forces. The B-1B bomber, a long overdue addition to our strategic triad, 
is being delivered ahead of schedule and under cost. The fleet of modern high quality fighters has doubled and the service has made major improvements in its airlift capability. These are achievements which Vern Orr and the entire Air Force should be justifiably proud. Vern Orr has earned the respect and gratitude of the Air Force, as has Joanne, for all she's done for the entire Air Force family. She's been a responsible member of the Orr team. Traveling with Vern, she's visited hundreds of Air Force facilities and carried back to Washington a clear picture of the needs of Air Force families. We can all be proud that family values are encouraged and protected in our military services. The ORs have seen to it that this is especially true in the Air Force. And Joanne, to you I offer the thanks of our nation. You've served well, and the Air Force is a better place for your having been there. The ORs are an Air Force family. Leaving Washington won't change that. They leave behind a legacy of excellence in service to their nation, a legacy that will guide Air Force families for years to come. So today, I have the privilege of bestowing on Vern a token of our gratitude for all that he and Joanne have accomplished. And Vern, we Californians are proud of you, and we Americans are grateful. We thank you for a job well done and wish you Godspeed. And now I believe we have some presentations to make. Ladies and gentlemen, the President takes pleasure in awarding the Department of Defense Medal for Distinguished Public Service to Mr. Vern Orr for Distinguished Public Service to the Department of Defense from February 1981 to November 1985 while serving as Secretary of the Air Force. During this period, Mr. Orr provided innovative, energetic leadership and direction as he provided, pr presided over the Air Force portion of this nation's defense revitalization program. The Air Force's successes with its strategic modernization programs and its great improvements in readiness and sustainability are directly attributable to Mr. Orr's strong leadership. He recognized the importance of people within his organization and created an environment in which all members of the Air Force could realize their full <coughs> potential. Through these efforts, he established a legacy that resulted in a stronger, more capable Air Force and a more effective defense for this nation for many years to come. Mr. Orr's dedication, loyalty, and strong sense of patriotism deserve the highest praise and reflect most notably upon himself, the Department of Defense, and our nation. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. And this is a certificate of appreciation to Joanne Moore. I won't read it because I've already said many of the names that are in it. But we're very proud. President, Mr. Vice President, my remarks will be very brief. First, Mr. President, may I say that I have no intention of writing a book. I take not a note with me, <laughs> and there will be no book. I've served the President for eight years in California and five years in government, and while that service has been public service, I consider it to be private service, and I have nothing that I'm going to share with the public about those wonderful years. It was Christmas Eve of 1966 when I got a call asking if I would serve in Governor-elect Ronald Reagan's administration, which we did through three different offices. And then in two political campaigns, I tried to be helpful. We first met the Vice President in Detroit uh, the morning after his selection. It's been a wonderful friendship, Mr. Vice President, and I have a feeling that uh, we'll see a great deal more. I hope so from our standpoint. I would only like to say that uh, from Joanne and from me, the 13 years that I have served Ronald Reagan and the greatest years of our lives because of his strong leadership and because of Cap's tremendous doggedness, strength in keeping up the defense budget. And Joanne and I go out feeling that these have been the golden years. And we'll never regret having served here. We'll look back on them. And to you, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Weinberger, Secretary of Defense, we're deeply grateful for the opportunity to serve all three of you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
job for you. I ever get around to reinstituting the force of habit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All set. All set. I don't Thanks even have to make it bad. It's Thank already you. Very well. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. We'll be seeing good. Thank you. Hey, Charlie. Good. 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 Good.